corn, soybeans, farm equipment. With the rise of China and its growing middle class of 300 million people, Iowa is finding that its commodities are in greater demand than ever before. Governor Chet Culver opened Iowa's trade office in Beijing in early 2008. He called it an effort to treat China as a trading partner rather than an economic competitor. Iowa is an agricultural state that relies on exporting commodities, so it's looking to gain better access to the Chinese market. On a global scale, uh, it makes us clearly one of the largest producing regions in the world, uh, in line with countries as large as Brazil and Argentina. Although they're larger, it certainly puts us in that class. And so as it relates to China, of course, uh, Chinese leaders, government leaders, importers clearly recognize that Iowa is a very important place for soybean production. I live on our uh, family farm uh, where our family settled, it was, and it's a century farm. So that means uh, for 100 years, a, a Schmidt has lived there. How many bushels do you say that is? We generally sell most of our crops directly to uh, either the end user or uh, Asia. China imports about 470 million bushels of soybeans each year, which has created a more than $3 billion market for U.S. growers. China also wants to modernize its own agricultural industry, which could be good news for Iowa businesses, according to the head of the state's trade office in Beijing. People in the government and the people, the farmers of Iowa, the manufacturers of Iowa, recognize that yeah, here's a country that's opening up. It's still growing. It is maturing at a very fast rate. Most of the soybeans are used in traditional vegetarian meals in China. But rising incomes mean more people are eating meat, which is driving demand for soybeans used in livestock and fish feed. Rising demand could lead to higher food prices worldwide. You're starting to see Western steakhouses, for example. Uh, you're beginning to see higher cuts of pork and beef being consumed by Chinese. Once consumers um, begin to experience uh, meat protein, they're not very likely to want to go back to proteins from other sources. And, and so we anticipate that that growth will continue. The rise of China's manufacturing sector, its trade imbalance with the United States, and its growing influence in world affairs cause some to view China as a threat. However, the growth of its consumer market and its desire to modernize present new opportunities for America. I don't think Chinese, China poses a threat at all. I think if we continue to engage the Chinese in a positive, mutually respectful way, uh, we have great opportunities to expand uh, economic, social, um, even political partnerships with China. And the sooner we, we as Americans accept the fact that we benefit uh, more from international and, and free trade than probably any country in the world, the sooner we can hopefully change this dialogue about taking our jobs and, and, and those kinds of things. We have to prepare our workforce for the new realities. What I've found in my years of experience there, that the people in China are not that much different from us. You know, they're hardworking people. They want to get ahead. They want to have a better life for their children than they had growing up. They want to advance. They are going to continue to buy the products that we come to take as, as being part of normal everyday life. And uh, I think that they, you will see continued sales, sales growth, uh, once you figure out how to enter that market. We're engaging uh, one of the largest potential markets, uh, one of the most populous countries in the world. And uh, if we do things right, uh, we maintain a presence there and continue that then uh, I think it should have some good benefits for, for Iowa and uh, the people of Iowa. We're really still the, the market.